uh, what happened today for um, an effort by the federal government to push us into in what I would call emergency hearing in the case of Unam Lekar, especially in view of the fact that we have made it clear to them that where Unam Lekar is detained, it is difficult for us to interact with him as lawyer and client because those who went to his house to kill him, those who went uh, to Kenya to kidnap him and bring him back to Nigeria are the same persons who are keeping him in their custody. And you want us to come into your cell where they have microphone, where they have cameras, where they have all manner of gadgets and discuss this thing. It is not possible. We cannot get justice. If we try it, it is as good as coming to tell the, the federal government, this is what the question we are going to ask you. Mm. I will so my any attempt to force us to go into this kind of hearing without a name that can be removed from the DSS custody is tantamount to a fundamental breach of his right to fair hearing. That is what we are saying. If you want a name that to to stand trial, if you want to call witness, if you want to bring evidence against them, under the law, detain him at Kuja prison or any prison of your choice. The prison we are talking about is the establishment of the federal government of Nigeria. It has security. If anybody is telling us that the, the Kuja prison does not have security or all the prisons in Nigeria no longer have security, then whose fault? Is it the fault of Fudna Mekano that your prison does not have security? No. So whose fault is it? Why are you punishing Namdekano in the DSS detention where, the, where, you, where you have those who kept him, those who arrested him, those who kidnapped him from Kenya? So our question is simple. Is it a proper thing for a lawyer to visit his client and you tell the lawyer you cannot write down anything? You cannot uh, use your beak and your paper to take down notes for your clients? That is the question we are asking the court, and the court has not been able to answer. Mm. That is the question we are asking the federal mm. government through their prosecution, and the prosecution has not been able to answer this. Now imagine, assuming we also have microphones in the office of the Attorney General, in the office of the prosecution, to listen to how they are preparing for this case. Will there be a trial? Will it not amount to us knowing what they are coming to do already before the trial? So, court case, there should be, everybody should have equal standard, equal position. Exactly. If you want us to go into trial, then treat us the way you are treating the prosecution. You cannot treat us badly and then treat the prosecution correctly, and then you expect that there will be fair trial. So, the federal government of Nigeria for now appears not to be fully ready for trial, but they will go and tell the world that it is the defense lawyers that, don't, that are not ready for trial. We are fully ready for trial if the writing is done. Exactly. Now they cannot say, look, how can I discuss my defense when the people who kidnapped me from Kenya are listening to the mic through their microphones in the place where I am detained? If you go to that place where Nam Dekano is, you will see gadgets at the four angles of the room. You will see uh, 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 microphones, video, everything on the table there. So the place is highly equipped with listening devices. And they have an adjoining room where they now watch you. They sit down there, relax, and they watch you. They watch what you are doing. They hear what you are conversing. The only way you can talk is when you, if you whisper and you cover your mouth and whisper to your client. How can you prepare a case like that? So it is only in Nigeria that we have this kind of unfair treatment of a suspect, of a defendant. Only in Nigeria. I don't think this happens in Somalia. I don't think they have, this happens to any other banana republic you can think of. Only in Nigeria, the giant of Africa, you have a situation where the man who, who, uh, who kidnapped you is also the one who is killing you, is also the one who is prosecuting you, is also going to be the witness in your case. And you expect the, the person you kidnapped to remain in your custody and, plan, and prepare and plan his case. What is the essence of having the Nigerian prison service or Nigerian correctional centers? Are you telling us that the DSS has better facility when it comes to management of awaiting trial inmates? No. The DSS department, the, the, uh, uh, office or cell is not a place where you keep awaiting trial inmates. That place should be a place where you keep people you are still investigating. If you refuse to follow the law, then it is unfortunate that you cannot do justice in this case. That is the simple thing we say today in court. And all effort by the prosecution to force us into trial all effort by the authorities to make sure that they bring in witness. We tried as much as possible to resist that effort. Yes. We cannot be part to killing the constitution. We cannot be part to murdering the constitution. Even if the constitution has to die, 
then it's, it's, it shouldn't die on the head of Mazen and the canon. Of course. Yes. The constitution is a grand norm, is the full, is a, is a, is a final law of Nigeria where every other law draws its source, its life form. So if you mess up the constitution, then why are we why why are we in court? You can as well write judgment, sentence him, convict him, and then tell us to go home. Instead of bringing us here to pretend that there is a trial, whereas there is no trial. So our summary is there is no trial because the, the federal government have refused to comply with section 36 of the constitution, which guarantees fair hearing. In the absence of fair hearing, nobody will go into any trial. We will not be party to it. Hebrews, Westerners, Easterners, Northerners, nobody will accept to be party to a trial where it is obvious that Section 36 is being contravened. Section 36 is the mother, is the mother of all other sections in the first trial. Fair trial, fair hearing. If you want to hear me, hear me properly. If you don't want to hear me, then it is better you just convict me and I go. I know that I've been convicted. So that's the summary of our meeting, of our discussion today in court. The summary of what transpired in court. And uh, I believe that Umu Biafra, Umu Ubu, worldwide, Biafra worldwide, Nigeria worldwide, will agree with us that it is important that the constitution of Nigeria be followed. Than kill the way it is trying to be killed today. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for addressing us. Please, uh, we want to know, on 28th of May is the, the, the day they adjourn the court case, right? Yes. Okay, we want to know if on that day that Mazen and Bikani will get justice. Can you address us on that? Well, I do not know what will happen on the 20th of May. The court has ruled that on the 20th of May, it is going to give us a ruling and or hearing. So, depending on how the ruling goes, if the ruling goes well, we'll thank God. If the ruling does not go well, well, we'll still thank God. They will think about, I will consult our client to know the next line of action to take. So, but as it is now, I cannot tell you whether there will be justice on the 20th of May. I am not a prophet. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. 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 This is what just happened in court. We hear him explaining everything. So the court, the case was adjourned to 28th of May, 2024. Uh, that's it. Uh, uh, this was the And um, we think we're all the way from the Akona family. In solidarity with our Muslim family. The next voice is Steve. Uh, in this Royal Majesty, President, Ambassador Dr. Steve Weiss, with my captain, who always ending on a Bible stage. This is the one of his program. And also the President General of Wales ending on a Nigerian diaspora. All right. Um, are you going to back here? Okay. 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 Um, how is uh, our people in our Oh, so they are all fine. They are all fine. This young man. Okay. Very good. And you have seen what transpired today, and I believe what happens today is not in any way, shape, or form that means your spirit, right? Exactly. Okay. And we hope to see you here again on the next Adon Days, right? I will. I will. Okay. Um, what message are you telling us, or are you relating to our people all over the world? Worldwide and uh, in Nigeria, yes. in Biafra land. Yes, my advice to all people, both in Nigeria and diaspora, to have patience, continue praying for our brother, our leader, so that by the grace of God, God will perform this wonder. There is no, you cannot give God. God is a wonderful God. And I know the God of evil land will surely deliver this young man. Because the world have seen that he has not done anything. And I believe they are going to deliver him. Our God is going to deliver him. My prayer is that by this adjournment, they will uh, try to raise him up there. 
which everybody, all the land we have will be happy about it. Okay, uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.